Hi. Now in this question, first of all, it is given that k is a positive constant. And by sketching the graphs of y equals 14 minus x squared and y equals k times the natural log of x on a single diagram, show that the equation 14 minus x squared equals k times the natural log of x has exactly one real root. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video, do come back when ready, and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's have a look then at the first part. So we've got to sketch the graph then of y equals 14 minus x squared. So to do this, I'd set up my axes and then I'd look at the graph of minus x squared. This will be a parabola looking something like this going through the origin. And then by adding 14, what this is going to do is going to translate the graph parallel to the y-axis up by 14 units. So I'm going to say it's going to look, say, something like that. Now, what I'd like to know is where it crosses the x-axis, which will be when y equals 0. So when y equals 0, we've got x squared equaling 14. And so x would be equal to the square root of 14, which will be plus or minus, really, root 14. So this would be at minus root 14, and this point here would be at plus root 14. I'll just put that in there, root 14. OK? We'll also just put the graph in then as well as y equals 14 minus x squared. The next up, we've got to draw on the same axis y equals k times the natural log of x, and k is a positive constant. So to build this graph up, we should know the graph of y equals the natural log of x. It's going to look, say, something like this. It goes through 1 on the x-axis. The natural log of 1 is 0. And it approaches the y-axis, which is an asymptote. Now, when you multiply it by a positive constant k, what's going to happen is the graph is going to stretch. Something like this, k units parallel to the y-axis, and this point will stay invariant. So let's just remove the graph of y equals the natural log of x, and now we've got this new graph which is y equals k times the natural log of x. Now it says that, show that the equation 14 minus x squared equals k times the natural log of x has exactly one real root. Well, I can see that it's got one real root. Now it's got to be this point here where they cross. They just cross in one place. So that real root will be the x value here. So we can say that there is one real root since only one point of intersection. Now, in the second part, we're told that the real root of the equation, 14 minus x squared equals 3 times the natural log of x, is denoted by alpha. And We've got to, in part A, find by calculation the pair of consecutive integers between which alpha lies. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back again when ready, and you can check your solution against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's just border this off. How are we going to find out this, these consecutive integers between which alpha lies? Well, alpha is this value here. Let's just label that as alpha, OK? Now, clearly, it lies between 1 and the square root of 14, which is about 3 point something or other. Now, what I'm going to do is build up a table of values for the graph of y equals 
14 minus x squared. And I'll do the same for y equals 3 times the natural log of x. And I'll be looking for where the y value, say for 14 minus x squared, goes from being above any y value on the graph of y equals 3 times the natural log of x to being below it, okay? So we can only see this really from forming a table. So if I draw up a table then, something like this, okay, we'll have our x here and y here. I'm going to take the values 1, 2, 3 and also 4 because Although this might be 3 something, okay, it could be just say more than 3.5, in which case it would be closer to the integer 4. So I do need to include that in my table. So when we substitute x equals 1 into here, we've got 14 take away 1, so that's clearly going to be 13. Substitute 2 in, you've got 14 minus 4, so that's going to be 10. And if you keep this up with the other values, you should find you get 5, and for 4 you get minus 2. Now to say we'll have a look at the other graph here, y equals 3 times the natural log of x. And again, if we draw up a table of values for that, okay... We'll have x here and y here, and our values 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you substitute 1 in, natural log of 1 is 0, so we're just going to get 0 for that. You can see it anyway from the graph here. And when you put 2 through, what you end up with is 2.0 and some other digits, okay? 2.0 and so on. For 3, you end up with 3.2 and so on. And for 4, you end up with 4.1 and so on. Now what I can see now is that when x is equal to 3, we've got a greater y value than what we've got for when x is 3 in this graph. So I can see that when x is 3, it must be a point to the left of alpha. But when I take x is 4, you can see that the y value is negative 2 and the y value here is 4.1. So when x is 4, we're looking at, say, a point roughly along this line here, okay, on the x axis. So clearly, alpha must be a value between 3 and and 4. And they're those two consecutive integers. So therefore, I'm going to put that alpha must lie between the consecutive integers 3 and 4. Now, for part B, now, it says use the iterative formula x with a subscript n plus 1 equals the root of 14 minus 3 times the natural log of x with a subscript n. And with a suitable starting value to find alpha. Show that the result of each iteration and give alpha correct to two decimal places. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video. OK, let's see how you got on then with this second part, part B, part 2B. This, by the way, was part 2A. Now, for this one, what we'll do is we now know that alpha lies between 3 and 4. So I can take any value as my starting value. I'm going to take 3.5, but do experiment with this, OK? Take other values, you should end up with the same result as me at the end of the day. So my first approximation, x1, is going to be 3.5. Now to get x2, the second approximation, what I've got to do is to use my iterative formula. It's going to be the root, then, of 14 minus 3 times the natural log of 
what would have been x1. And x1 is 3.5. Now I could work this out on the calculator, but there's a quick way of doing this, which I've shown you in many other examples if you've been following them. And that is that if you're using a calculator, just make sure that you press the AC button. That should clear anything that's in the memory. And then just enter 3.5. Then press equals, and this is stored under the answer key. If we clear this and press answer again and press equals, you'll see that that is 3.5. Let's just clear the calculator again. And now what we do is we type in the iterative formula. We start then with the square root and then we enter 14, then minus three times the natural log of now instead of writing 3.5 what we do is we enter this as the answer and as I showed you earlier there this is remembered as 3.5 and then we just close the bracket let's just move the cursor outside of the square root and now by pressing equals we get the result for x2 and you'll see that that turns out to be 3.2002 and so on. Now we're trying to give our answer alpha correct to two decimal places so what I'm interested in is this third digit here. I'll just underline it. What I'm looking for is that this third digit doesn't change. So I haven't got many results so far, so I need my third approximation, x3. And what I do is just press equals on the calculator. And this gives us the result 3.2419 and so on. And you can see the third digit here was a zero, but now it's a one. So it's not staying exactly the same. So what I need to do now is just press equals again on the calculator and if I do that I get my fourth approximation x4 and that turns out to be 3.2359 and so on. So now we've got a 5 as that third digit. So I need to press equals again and if I do that I get x5 equals 3.2368 and so on. It's now gone to a 6, so we're still not settling down to a consistent answer. So we do it again and get x6, that's 3.2366 and so on. And now we've seen that it's settled on the 6. So to two decimal places I can say that therefore x equals 3.24 to two decimal places, 2dp. Now do try different values for your starting value. It doesn't have to be 3.5. Just take any value in between 3 and 4. Do a routine similar to what I've just done here and you should find that it will go to 3.24 in the long term to two decimal places. Anyway, I hope you've been able to understand that and if you did it on your own and got these answers right, well done. If not, I hope you've been able to follow and understand where you may have gone wrong.